คุณผู้ชมคะการศึกษาเรื่องพันธุกรรมมนุษย์โดยเฉพาะแผนที่พันธุกรรมจีโนมก็มีความสำคัญอย่างมากนะคะที่จะไขยความลับการทำงานของร่างกายของแต่ละคนโดยเฉพาะในระดับเซลล์แต่ถ้าจะให้เข้าใจจีโนมก็ต้องเรียนรู้และทำความเข้าใจเรื่องยีนก่อนดิฉันได้คุยกับนักวิทยาศาสตร์รางวัลโนเบลซึ่งค้นคว้าวิจัยเรื่องของการแยกยีนการประกบยีนซึ่งนำไปสู่การได้รับรางวัลโนเบลนะคะและขอให้นักวิทยาศาสตร์ท่านนี้เล่าให้ฟังถึงผลของงานวิจัยค่ะดรริชาร์ดโรเบิร์ตส์นักวิทยาศาสตร์ชาวอังกฤษได้รับรางวัลโนเบลสาขาการแพทย์เมื่อปี2536 For a molecular biologist that usually means knowing the sequence จากความสนใจเรื่องวิทยาศาสตร์ตั้งแต่วัยเด็กกลายเป็นความมุ่งมั่นที่จะเป็นนักวิจัยทางด้านอนุชีววิทยางานวิจัยเกี่ยวกับยีนและการประกบยีนของดรโรเบิร์ตส์นำไปสู่การค้นพบเรื่องการแสดงออกของยีนเพื่อสร้างโปรตีนนักวิทยาศาสตร์วัย80ปีท่านนี้เดินทางมาไทยตามคำเชิญของ International Peace Foundation เพื่อจุดประกายวงการวิทยาศาสตร์ในไทยไทย PBS ได้มีโอกาสสัมภาษณ์พิเศษและได้ขอให้ดรโรเบิร์ตส์เล่าให้ฟังถึงงานวิจัย Your Nobel Prize winning research mm -hmm. is on gene split and yes, gene splicing. It's basically showing that genes in eukaryotic cells in higher organisms like you and I, they're different. They're arranged differently than those in bacteria. So in bacteria, a gene is just a continuous piece of DNA. It's as though I'd made a movie and just shot the whole thing. In eukaryotes, genes are split. Into pieces, so you've got a big piece of DNA, and a little bit of the gene is here, and a bit here, a bit here, and you have to cut and splice them in much the way when you make a movie, you cut and splice all the scenes so that it looks as though it's a continuous piece of action. This is what you do with DNA in eukaryotic cells. You make mRNA that copies all of the DNA, and then you cut and splice that messenger RNA. To make a small messenger RNA that encodes the protein. So it must have profound impact on understanding of genetics. Totally. Can yes. you explain in simple terms what's the contribution of your research for scientific community and for global population? Well, I, I think you know we've. You probably know about this project to sequence the human genome, which took place many years ago. That sequence, you could not have interpreted it. You could not have understood what it meant if you didn't know about my discovery, because the human genome is huge, and the genes are in pieces all the way through it. And you have to know about this: the fact that they're in pieces, and then you can look for those pieces when you're doing analysis of the sequence. And so, almost any time you want to study anything about higher organisms, plants, people. Mammals, birds, fish, any of these, their genomes are all arranged in this same way. The genes are split up into little pieces, and so you can't hope to understand all of this at the molecular level from a molecular biology point of view if you didn't know about my discovery. You are in Thailand. You are invited to be keynote speaker in mm -hmm. Thailand on Japan ASEAN Witches Series. Mm -hmm. What's the key message in your keynote address? Uh -huh. Well, I think. You know what I like to say is that when you make discoveries, um, you should look for ways that you can commercialize them, if it's possible. Okay, don't try and commercialize them if it's not possible. But if it is possible, look for ways to commercialize them, and that's what happened in my case. And so I, I will tell my personal story of how I got involved with the company in setting it up in the first place, the company that I now work for. I'm, I don't own it. I'm, I, I, you know, I helped them get started in the first place, but I tried to get the lab I was working in to do it, and they weren't interested. And so, maybe the researchers, when they make discoveries, need to find better ways of talking to politicians, of talking to the heads of their universities, of talking to the general public, so that if there are commercial possibilities, then they should be followed and they should be exploited. Do you mean you want to enlighten scientific community or young scientists in yeah. Thailand that mm -hmm. they should have their skill in commercial yeah. interest as well, well not I, just only in the lab? You know what I usually tell young people is don't listen too hard to old people because old people have ideas 
that maybe you're not correct. You know, as you get older, you get very dogmatic. You think you know everything. You think you're smarter than the young people. I disagree. I, I think the young people are the smart people, and the old people need to listen to them uh, and let them make the discoveries. Let them do what they're able to do. We, we shouldn't think that we should try and control them. You know, and this is a problem in Asia. You know, mothers always feel that they should be controlling their children. They shouldn't. The children should rebel and tell their mothers to get out of the way. In this current age, people mm -hmm. must be worried with advancement of AI, mm -hmm. new technology, the digital age, yes. even though you say that mm -hmm. science is integrated into people's life. Mm -hmm. But what's your thought, what's your view about AI advancement? AI can be really good and it can be bad, okay? And, you know, Nobel made his, his discovery of dynamite. Dynamite is something you can use for good. You can knock out mountains. You can make tunnels through mountains. You can deal, make changes in the land. Or you can give it to the army and they'll kill one another with it. And so everything that we do in science and discovery always has the opportunity to be good or to be bad. And AI falls very much into that category, I think. And one of the problems at the moment is it's not being regulated properly. And also, if you want to really use it for good in science, you've got to make sure that there is good data that it's working on. So, you know, if you look at chat GPT, I call it cheat GPT, it uses nonsense. You know, it goes to all the rubbish that you find on the Internet. Um, social media has been using these kinds of generative AI programs in order to make sure that as soon as you say you like something, you see more of it. Just keeps coming over. That's not the way to teach people. You know, to teach people, you need to see both sides of the story.